On a dusty evening following a volcanic eruption on a nearby hill, a group of hominins searched for trees to take cover. They were aware that predators might come out earlier due to the hazy sky. A light rain began, turning the fine ash on the ground wet like snow. Walking together, the hominins left tracks in the ash, like footprints on a wet beach. One of them, a young hominin, worried that these tracks might give away their location. But she didn't realize how lasting those tracks would be. Over time, the ash would harden like cement, and future volcanic eruptions would cover their footprints, preserving their journey for millions of years. Little did she know that millions of years later, in the 1970s, paleontologists led by Mary Leakey would discover their fossilized footprints at Laetoli in Tanzania. The tracks, dating back 3.6 to 3.7 million years, revealed the journey of these early hominins named Australopithecus afarensis as they walked towards something unknown. Australopithecus afarensis is a fascinating early hominin species from East Africa which has pushed our understanding of hominin history beyond 3 million years. The species lived for over 900,000 years, surpassing our species duration by over four times, with over 400 specimens collected from various sites, including the famous Lucy from Hadar, Ethiopia. This species has become a rock star in paleoanthropology. Thanks to refined dating techniques, we now know that Australopithecus afarensis existed between 3.7 and 3 million years ago. This species, with its remarkable bipedal locomotion, played a pivotal role in shaping our understanding of human evolution, from the early days of upright walking to the nuances of growth, development, and dietary adaptations. The taxonomic and phylogenetic research in paleoanthropology which experienced a renaissance around the time of a forensis discovery, has benefited from the extensive baseline data on skeletal and dental variation provided by the Hadar site sample. Several debates persist, including the nature of terrestrial bipedality, the degree of sexual dimorphism and its implications for social behavior, and the structure of the phylogenetic tree before the emergence of homo and robust Australopith lineages. Lucy is a famous hominin fossil, discovered in 1974 by paleoanthropologist Donald Johansson in the Afar region of Ethiopia. Her skeleton was about 40% complete, and was a groundbreaking find, making her one of the most complete early hominins known at the time. The excavation took three weeks, revealing 47 out of 207 bones, including parts of the arms, legs, spine, ribs, pelvis, lower jaw, and skull fragments. Notably, there were no duplicate bones, indicating they belonged to a single individual. Lucy's pelvic bones indicated she was female. Despite her small stature of 1.05 meters and an estimated weight of 28 kilograms, certain features suggested she was a young adult. The nickname Lucy comes from the Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which the team often played at their camp. Formerly known as AL288-1, Lucy's age is around 3.18 million years. Initially, Johansson thought she might be a small member of the genus Homo or a small Australopithecine. However, further analysis of nearby fossils, and those from Laetoli in Kenya led scientists to establish a new species, Australopithecus afarensis, four years after Lucy's discovery. At that time, afarensis was considered the oldest known hominin species, although more ancient species have since been found. The taxon Australopithecus afarensis was suggested for all Hadar specimens. The Laetoli footprints, about 70 in total, suggest that these hominins walked in a manner more similar to humans than apes. Their foot structure, gait, and biomechanics resembled those of modern humans, although their legs may have been slightly more bent at the knee. The footprints also reveal intriguing social dynamics. Different sized feet indicate a small group walking from south to north, with a smaller individual stepping into the footprints of a larger one. Another set of footprints, discovered 40 years later, showed a larger individual walking alongside smaller ones, suggesting a social group comprising a large male, females, and children. The Laetoli footprints provide valuable insights into the behavior and anatomy of early hominins, shedding light on their social structures and walking patterns. 
The well-preserved condition of Lucy's fossils allowed scientists to study her morphology and draw certain conclusions. Lucy's size was confirmed by other Hadar remains, indicating a smaller stature compared to modern humans. The length ratio of her humerus to femur suggested longer arms relative to legs, a feature not seen in current humans. The hand and foot bones of Lucy and related specimens differed from those of contemporary individuals. The structure of Lucy's hip suggested a bipedal posture, a significant aspect of her morphology. One notable missing part of Lucy is her face, as only a few cranial fragments were found. Reconstruction of her cranium involved combining fragments from different specimens, making the calculation of cranial capacity less precise. Nevertheless, it was evident that individuals like Lucy had a very small brain. It's important to note that Lucy's bipedalism, once emphasized, is now seen in a context different from modern humans' walking style. Lucy revealed bipedalism with a chimpanzee-like cranial size. This insight challenges earlier ideas and contributes to our understanding of early human evolution, highlighting the coexistence of bipedal locomotion and smaller brain size in our ancestors. Australopithecus afarensis, like Lucy, showed a mix of both primitive and more advanced traits, making them a great example of mosaic evolution. Some features such as their hip shape were advanced and similar to later hominins, indicating a closer relationship. On the other hand, certain traits like their V-shaped dental arcade different from our parabolic one, longer arms and their small, robust brain were more primitive. Despite having a small brain, a forensis had a pelvis and leg bones that functioned similarly to modern humans. In simple terms, they were like ape-brained creatures with body structures suited for walking on two legs. While Lucy was bipedal and terrestrial, it retained some aspects of ancestral tree-dwelling behavior, evolving a different kind of bipedalism compared to modern humans. Some scientists believe that while a forensis walked upright, their bipedalism might have been less efficient than that of modern humans, possibly making their walking style appear a bit odd. Others argue that a forensis was efficient in bipedalism, and that the differences in their pelvic and femur shape compared to humans were related to later adaptations for childbirth. The shape of the skull and teeth suggest a diet involving lots of chewing. These features include thick enamel on the teeth, large cheek teeth, and strong jaw muscles. However, when they examined the microscopic wear patterns on the teeth, they found something unexpected. Instead of resembling other primates that eat hard foods, a forensis teeth wear patterns were more like those of mountain gorillas, which mostly eat tough plants. Australopithecus afarensis might have resorted to eating hard, brittle foods during tough times like dry seasons. The sexual dimorphism, which refers to differences in physical characteristics between males and females of a species, is an interesting area to look for in a forensis. In modern primates, the level of dimorphism in body size and canine size reflects the intensity of competition between males and females. Species with high levels of competition tend to have more significant differences in body and canine size between males and females while those with low competition show less difference. Australopithecus afarensis shows a considerable level of dimorphism in skeletal size, comparable to or even exceeding that seen in great apes like gorillas and orangutans. This means that male and female afarensis individuals had noticeable differences in body size. However, when it comes to canine size, the differences between males and females in afarensis are relatively small compared to other primates. Canines are important for competition between males and many primate species. But in a forensis, the size difference in canines between males and females is less pronounced. The small canine size dimorphism indicates reduced male-male competition compared to other primates. Additionally, analyzing variation in a forensis fossils is complicated by combining individuals from different times and places. This can lead to misunderstandings about the level of variation within a single population. New discoveries may shed more light on how sexual dimorphism and variation changed over time in afarensis populations. The environment where Lucy and her kin lived at Hadar was ever-changing. 
Picture a scene where a massive river wound its way through the landscape, sometimes expanding into a vast lake. Fossils of hominins, like Lucy, were mostly found in the sands and silts left behind by these rivers, hinting that these areas were more conducive to preserving bones. Despite what you might imagine, it wasn't just one type of habitat. Instead, there was a mix of wet grasslands, shrubby areas, and even riparian forests. This diversity wasn't static either, it shifted over the thousands of years the Hadar formation represents. Some spots were lush and wooded, while others were more arid and open. Now let's talk about Lucy's adaptability. She and her kind weren't picky about where they lived. Whether it was dry grasslands, dense forests, or something in between, they made it work. Recent evidence suggests they might have preferred a bit of everything, like open woodlands, grassy plains, shrublands, and even closed woodlands near rivers. Although the Litoli site, another significant location for Aferensis fossils, had different habitats from Hadar, it still provided similar resources. It was a mix of open and closed environments, and volcanic eruptions periodically impacted local vegetation. Australopithecus afarensis kept the same dental and jaw structure, despite changes in their environment, showing they could adapt. Dental microwear patterns also remained constant, indicating that either afarensis could find preferred food sources, despite subtle environmental changes, or the changes in diet didn't affect the mechanical properties of the foods they consumed. Lucy holds a special place in the hearts of many for several reasons. To Ethiopians, she is a symbol of national pride, representing their country's rich history and heritage. Across Africa, she stands as a testament to the continent's pivotal role in human evolution, reminding the world that Africa is indeed the birthplace of humankind. Lucy's Ethiopian name, Dinkanesh, meaning your marvelous reflects the admiration she inspires. In the Afar region, Lucy is affectionately known as Hilamali, which translates to, she is special. Indeed, Lucy's discovery marked a groundbreaking moment in paleoanthropology. As the oldest and most complete hominin skeleton ever found at the time, she provided crucial evidence that bipedalism, or walking on two legs, evolved before the development of large modern human-sized brains. Her discovery supported the scientific understanding that human evolution is a gradual process, involving the emergence and survival of transitional forms over vast periods of time. Lucy's species, Australopithecus afarensis, thrived for over one million years, leaving an indelible mark on our understanding of human origins. Through Lucy, we glimpse into the distant past, marveling at the journey of our species and the remarkable story of our shared ancestry.